and public intoxication several times over the last 13 years. So, Skip, let's talk about this big picture. Uh, what is your take from what you've been able to uh, ascertain? Stephen A. Smith, you know how much of a fan I am of Johnny Manziel, the football player. You also know I am not a fan of Johnny Manziel, the after hours partier. And here we go again. What troubles me the most is let's hark back to draft night. And, and I remind you, the coach and the GM of the Cleveland Browns were not completely on board with drafting Johnny in the first place because of a number of after hours incidents and misbehavior in their view. It was pushed more by the owner and the quarterback coach to take Johnny Manziel where the Browns did in the draft. So I'm sure the Browns are going to be even more skeptical of Johnny's future off this incident. But in this case, if we may examine the facts that we do know, we, we don't know all the facts, but the ones that we do know, I personally cannot condemn Johnny Manziel for his behavior in this circumstance. As Kerry points out, the alleged victim does have a rap sheet convicted of assault, and as she pointed out, cited for an open flask of alcohol, then for public intoxication, then for disorderly conduct, then for disorderly conduct and obstructing official business, and then he was charged on, on a finances issue. So, again, are we surprised he got involved with Johnny? No. Now, back to Kerry's reference to entourage. The point of order here is Johnny was with his mother and an associate that I think is his sort of his right. roommate. So I don't know if that qualifies as an entourage, yeah. but his mother was visiting. So <laughs> for the record, this incident was reported to the police at 2.36 a.m. This was on Friday night slash Saturday morning. Right. The team obviously was about to fly out the next morning for Atlanta for Sunday's game. So obviously you don't want Johnny staying up all night. But the incident in question well could have happened at... I'm just guessing here, maybe at 1 o'clock. And it, it happened in the hotel in which Johnny is living. He lives in a hotel, so it's possible. I'm just throwing this out, Stephen A., that Johnny and his mom and his associate just stopped in the hotel bar for a nightcap. And then as they went to the private elevator that goes up to the condominium suites in which he lives, the alleged victim approached him. I don't know what happened from there, but the alleged victim says that the associate attacked him and then Johnny attacked the, the, the alleged victim's brother. And some kind of a fisticuffs ensued. Yes. That's all we know. I do know this, Stephen A., and this is what always troubles me about Johnny's past. As you well remember, back in Johnny's pure freshman year at Texas A&M in the springtime, Outside a bar in College Station, his roommate got into a fracas with another man, and Johnny wound up stepping in and fighting the other man, getting arrested. The police report said he was very intoxicated, was Johnny, and Johnny spent the night in jail. And he admitted later, my career flashed before me. I was afraid I wasn't going to survive this incident at Texas A&M. So he does have some history here. I'm not going to con condemn him for what happened near this elevator, but once again, I'm sure the Browns are going to be even more skeptical than <clears throat> ever about Johnny's future with the Cleveland Browns. Well, if they're skeptical, that's their problem, because to be quite honest with you, I think it's incredibly unfair to Johnny Manziel uh, that things from his past are even brought up due to this particular incident in question. I think it's egregious. I think it's incredibly unfair to him. Not talking about you, Skip Bayless, but I'm just talking about you mirroring what other yep. people are likely thinking in all likelihood, because I know how you feel about Johnny Manziel. Uh, in this particular situation, obviously, we don't know the evidence. The facts will reveal themselves. We're not the police. We weren't there. So this is just us uh, uh, giving our perspective and our opinion uh, based on what we've read and what we've heard. I preface my comments by saying that to say that I don't believe the alleged victim in all of this at all. And I'm going to tell you why. 
Uh, first of all, Johnny Manziel being by an elevator, you know, with his quote unquote entourage. If one of those people included his mother, <laughs> I resent the notion that it's an entourage. Yep, it's agree. his mother. It's his mother. That's number one. Number two, it's in a hotel. Uh, he could have been visiting her, vice versa. She could have been there, whatever the case may be. Number three, um, you know, he's not the starting quarterback for the Cleveland Browns. He isn't playing very much. Uh, he probably knows the playbook backwards and forwards as of right now. Uh, this wasn't a nightclub. He wasn't inebriated. Uh, there, was no, uh, there was no issues of alcohol as it pertained to him, uh, according to the reports. So what's the problem? What's the crime here? That he stayed up late? I mean, give me a break. And then we got this guy right here, which is why I don't believe this guy at all. Let me read from the quote, according to the reports here. He said, quote, I'm the biggest Browns fan ever. I love you. I want to give you a hug. Who does that? <laughs> I know women that might want that from somebody <laughs> who's popular and stuff like that. But uh, 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 one of the brothers... I'm talking about brothers, white, black, Hispanic, yeah. whatever. A dude, yep. a dude asking you, I want to give you a hug? Stop. Stop. We, we Listen, if anything, that shows me that either he's lying or he was drunk, well, okay, to think that yeah. you could roll up on somebody and give them a hug. So, so to me, all of this stuff speaks to something that was instigated. Now, again, we don't know. Because we have a responsibility to acknowledge. I wasn't there. I'm not an eyewitness. I don't know what happened. But based on what I'm reading and me surmising what might have transpired, knowing what it's like, at least to some degree, because, Skip, as you well know, first take, it's a different ball game right now, bro. I hated the fact that people called me a celebrity. I, could, I despised it. I didn't believe it. I refused to accept it. Until about a year ago, yeah. I've caved. It, it's true. We are celebrities now. We roll out in the streets. People think they can come up to us, sometimes say what they want to say, act the way they want to act, or whatever the case may be. I, I refuse to believe that Johnny Manziel was just going to get on an elevator, and because this dude said, I'm a fan of yours, or whatever, and approached him, all of a sudden, you know, his quote-unquote entourage, which included Johnny Manziel's mother, started raining punches on this dude, or what have you. Stop. Nobody's buying that. Something is amiss here. Something's a bit awry. We don't know what it is, admittedly so, but, you know, you connect the dots. And as far as I'm concerned, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it ain't a damn mongoose. It's a duck. And I'm looking at this guy and thinking about his report and some of the things that he's saying, and I see things that make absolutely no sense to me. So to me, until somebody can prove to me otherwise, as far as I'm concerned, the victim here is Johnny Manziel because we're on national TV talking about him, bringing his character and his past transgressions and everything else into the forefront and into question because of potentially, anyway, an idiot who didn't know how to act yep. and got dealt with because of it. Okay. That's the way I look at it. Okay, again, point of order, Johnny lives at that hotel. So he was where he lived, trying to go up the, the elevator to his suite that he lives in. Not that, that he was and saying... Smart, that, and smart enough, and smart enough, Skip, not to be by himself. Okay. Because if he were by himself, then anything could be said. Okay, obviously, I'm, a, I'm going to assume here that Johnny's associate felt that Johnny was being threatened by this man some way that, that the man wanted to hug him. I'm going to assume alcohol was involved here. I don't know that, but this man does have a track record of public intoxication. Now, here I am, Johnny's supporter, and I'm going to play devil's advocate. My point back to you, and I appreciate everything you just said because I want to believe everything you just said, including your position on this. What troubles me about it is that it seemed like Johnny should be under sort of a zero tolerance policy as a pro quarterback. Okay, look, people roll up on you all the time in the airport or on 7th Avenue in New York City, Broadway for that matter. And yet, I haven't yet read of an incident in which Stephen A. struck a man for, for trying to hug him. And I hope I don't read about that okay, one, I and, and I don't think I am. Yeah. So why couldn't this have been avoided? Because it is Johnny Manziel. <laughs> His future in Cleveland does teeter here a little bit, in part because of the success of Brian Hoyer. There's a part of me that wants him yeah. out of Cleveland, yeah. that I do hope they trade him and he can have a fresh start 
for a team that truly wants Johnny Manziel to be its quarterback because I don't believe the coach and the GM truly want Johnny to be their franchise quarterback going forward. But back to you in, in this issue, why couldn't Johnny avoid fisticuffs here? Why couldn't they have been avoided? Well, well, first of all, Skip Bayless, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a poor example to use because, number one, I'm not the most approachable dude in no, the world. You're not. That's number one. And I, I am that hand. way. Damn. I am Sorry. that way. That's yeah. right. And I am that way intentionally. Let me be very, very clear. Around family, friends, loved ones, people who know me, I'm incredibly approachable. If I don't know you, I, know. I don't like you rolling I up on it. me a certain way. And the code in the street, Skip, yep, I got dudes it. know this. They know this. I'm not talking about just about me. They know that you there's a certain way you are supposed to roll up on somebody and approach them. Some dudes that don't know how to act, yep. you know what? They get checked. And I'll be the first to admit, let me tell you something right now. We haven't had that kind of incident because <clears throat> I'll be the first to admit to you. The kind of brothers that I roll with, uh, you, you don't want to roll up on me the wrong way. You just don't. And I mean, they're law-abiding citizens. Yep. They're not criminals. But we're streetwise. And we, under we, we, we know troublemakers and we can spot them. It's really, really not hard. But, you, uh, but I say all of that to say that, Skip Bayless, the people that I hang with are adults. You know, they're accomplished professionals. They're intelligent, but they're also streetwise. But at the same time, if you put your hands on me, there's going to be a problem <laughs> with those people who are with me. Then we read their cousins, it. their friends, their family members. There's going to be a problem okay. if you think you get to touch me. That's a fact. <sighs> and if Johnny Manziel was by the elevator or wherever he was, and his friends were with him, and this dude tried to touch him, <clears throat> you have a problem because that is not something that you do okay. without permission. Can, can I ask one favor? Yes. In the future, sure. my friend, if yeah. somebody rolls up on you <laughs> and touches <laughs> you in a way that you find threatening, will you please do me the favor of not striking him with your fist or, or ask your, your friends not to strike him with their fists? Because sure. it serves no I mean, purpose. I mean it gets us nowhere. Well, well, it depends on what Unless I mean by that. Truly I, 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 I'm, not, I, I'm not talking about somebody that's putting a hand on your shoulder I, I or comes up. To, I'm not talking about something like that. When I say put your hands on you, because you have to understand, I don't believe that this guy was trying to hug him, and that's why somebody put their you. hands on him. <laughs> if they put their hands on the dude, it's because you were trying to do something other than hug him. I'm not <clears> talking <throat> about literally somebody touching you, putting their hands on you, hugging you. I'm talk when I say put their hands on you, I'm right. talking about somebody that is, is looking to inflict violence upon you. Yep. Okay. And I can promise you, I can promise you, I'm 47 years of age. I know I, the only the only criminal activity I've ever been involved in is a speeding ticket. That is it. Okay. <laughs> on but a lighter note, Stephen A. I hold remember. On, hold on. Okay, go hold ahead because we got to get to I, I'm this. I'm just saying that I can promise you I will never initiate anything. Of course not. I can't not. promise you what I'm going to do. I can't promise you what I'm going to okay. do if somebody hits me, Skip. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. that's fair. No one's going to hit with anybody. You. Uh, let's on a lighter note. Talk about the time that I had to serve as your security. You remember that time in New York? When we came out of the and you function, wanted, the John Wooten function. And you wanted to talk to a thousand people? Well, they were everywhere. And and Carrie played bad cop, I must admit, and said, nope, it's over. We gotta go. We gotta go. We, we gotta, gotta get ready for our show tomorrow. I, I would have stayed until they were all happy, but that's just me. Yeah, I understand. I don't, no and I would have left eventually. You would have. Yes. Like, like immediately.